Well hello and welcome once again to our live broadcast here. Great to be with you from the British countryside. Um, the trees behind me, it's, it's a bit windy around here so I'm just trying to keep out of the wind. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of a view though across where I am um, anyway because it, it is quite beautiful. Let's have a look. Oh hang on, got to undo this. That's it. Right, so... That, that that's where I am. Give you a little bit of a view. Isn't that lovely? I think they'll be harvesting this field fairly soon. So that is where I am today. In fact, I could I could turn around and do things around that way like that, so you can see. It's a bit, a bit bright on the camera, isn't it? Yeah, we might have to go back this way. Right, there we are. Anyway, welcome, welcome to the programme. Uh, please do put your comments in the comments section, your thoughts, um, the things you'd like to express. And also your prayer requests, um, as soon as we see those, they will get prayed for. So put your prayer requests in the comments section. Do press the share button, whether you're watching live, or in fact you're uh, watching the replay at someone else. Do, uh, do press that share button as well. Just to encourage those that watch the replay, you know, when you post your comments or your uh, prayer requests into the comments section, I do get to see that. As soon as you comment or you put, you know, you type in, say, please pray for me, I'm sick with this, that and the other. I get a notification from Facebook and as soon as I see that I will pray for it as soon as I can and I will put a like next to it and praying underneath type that so you know that your prayer request is seen still even if you didn't manage to come on actually live at the time on the program the comments section remains live if you like and so you can get prayer you can make your comments and it will be seen that sort of thing so do make use of all of that uh, while you can. I also offer another facility for people for prayer and that is on Facebook Messenger. You can type me a prayer request on Facebook Messenger. Uh, you can also press and hold the microphone button and record a prayer and send that to me and then I will record one back and send it to you. Unfortunately I can't really answer um, Messenger calls, audio calls or video calls because I just get too much stuff coming through. But if you do it the way I say, I can I can respond to those when I get the opportunity. And that way you can still get live prayer and get a prayer for yourself that way. So you can press and hold the microphone button in Messenger, speak your prayer request, and then, which might be easier for you if you're from another country and you can't type English very easily. Or you can type it in English and you can write it to me. Uh, or you can come on here and put your prayer request in the comment section like that as well. So all of those things are ways that you can communicate and get live prayer for yourself. So God bless you and welcome to the programme. Now today, I'm very briefly going to talk about fruitfulness. How do we become fruitful in our lives, in our ministries? What is, or what is one of the keys to fruitfulness? I just want to show you something here. They've got a very interesting cloud formation uh, in the sky right here. Let's have a look at this. Just before we get into that, look. Can you see that? Do you get some unusual stuff at times? I might screenshot that myself. Yeah. So, anyway, going back to uh, what we were saying. What are the keys to fruitfulness in the Christian walk and in the Christian life. To answer that, I would like to point you to the fact that all of our help, all of our guidance in this life comes from God. So you have to remember that. You have to remember that God himself, I mean, if you go back to the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, everything they had was provided by God and the focal point of the Garden of Eden was God himself. So always, always the provision 
was from God and everything else was connected to and with God. Do you understand what I'm saying? I think in the days we live in, a lot of people are trying to work everything else out with their mind, their own abilities, their own skills um, and all of this. But the ground base of everything we need is God himself. Now, how do I connect to God? How do I, in my life, have God involved with me? Well, that's just the sort of thing I want to talk about on this short program here today. How can you be fruitful? How can you see things happen in your life? Are you interested to know that today? Because the Bible teaches us these things. It shows us what we can do. Because you'll find he really does. And this is why Jesus said, uh, you can read it in John's Gospel. You can read from chapter 14 to 17 and read until they go out and into uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. But at the final Passover meal, at the final Passover meal Jesus began to speak about certain things. He would talk to them about the coming of the Holy Spirit. He talked to them that he wasn't going to, even though he was going to leave them, he wasn't leaving them defenseless. He wasn't leaving them on their own. He wasn't leaving them without help. No, no, no. Great provision had been made from eternity past for humanity, for the body of Christ. And that, of course, is the person of the Holy Spirit. So it's so important that we understand the key role of the person of the Holy Spirit today in our lives uh, as we live as believers and also in Christian ministry, uh, the center key role and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Because he is the one that will cause you to be fruitful in your life and in your ministry. Now you can do your life without the person of the Holy Spirit, yes you can. You can even try to do Christian ministry without the person of the Holy Spirit, and many do. But you see, you won't see fruitfulness without him. You see, the Spirit of God is the great, great, excuse me, the great provision of heaven. Jesus said, is this better for you that I go away because another will come? Father and I are going to send someone in our stead. New provision has been made for you. Now, at the time, if I was one of the disciples, I guess I would have thought to myself, you're going away and it's going to be better for us that you go away. Having seen you minister for three years, traveling around, miracles, signs and wonders, the dead being raised, food being multiplied, demons being cast out galore, but you're going away and it's going to be better for us. I think I would have taken some convincing as to that point. But nonetheless, if Jesus says something, then it is true. Now, of course, we know the day of Pentecost came and the very provision that he was talking about arrived. The spirit of the living God. See, Jesus said that with me and if you abide in me, you can do all things. But without me, you can do nothing. You see, it's the Spirit of God that connects us to Jesus. He is the one that connects us to Jesus, that makes us in unison with Jesus so that we can do all things. But without him, then that's another story. I find it interesting that Jesus said to his disciples, you know, Peter, James, John and the gang, he said, wait in Jerusalem, don't try and start the ministry. Don't try. Don't try and start the mandate I've given you for the world yet. Wait until you receive power from 
on high. Which would denote to you and me as we read the scriptures that until Acts chapter 2, they did not have the full provision of heaven, power from on high, the person of the Holy Spirit. He had not empowered them to carry out the life and ministry that had been entrusted to them. However, Acts chapter 2 did happen and he came and they were empowered. You see, the key to fruitfulness in the Christian walk is your relationship with the Holy Spirit of God. Based around the Word of God and in his mighty presence. After all, how could we ignore the provision of heaven? Jesus said, somebody's coming to take over from me and to lead you. And I would say, well, that's fantastic. Who is he or when's he coming? If you want to understand the word of God, you need the spirit of God to interpret the spirit of God, the scriptures to you. Hey, Patricia, hi. You need the spirit of God to interpret the word of God to you. You need the spirit of God to bring character to you. You read that in Galatians 5. The fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, and so on, faith. Or, but those are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. In order to carry out the ministry, we also need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. As mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12. But again, notice they are gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the character, the fruit, is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The, 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 the gifts are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So he brings us the power to carry out the mandate that Jesus gave to the body of Christ. He gives us the character, he brings the character of Jesus Christ to us. He is also the one that interprets the scriptures for us. The scriptures that were written by the Holy Spirit. You realise that, don't you? Because the Bible says that all scripture is by inspiration of God. So men of old, they heard and saw the things of God and wrote them down as the Spirit of God inspired them to see and know and understand things. In 1 Corinthians we read that the things of the spirit are a nonsense to the natural mind and cannot be understood by the natural mind. So the things of God, the things of the spirit, the communication of heaven are like what it says in the Psalms that day and night the heavens issue forth speech. But nonetheless, the decoding of that speech, the receiving of that information, the hearing and understanding and application of that information, that revelation, that understanding from God, nonetheless has to be decoded to us by the Holy Spirit. The scriptures also go on to say that those that are led by the Spirit, they are the children of God. So as you can see, the spirit of the living God is completely central and vital to anything and everything that we have to do in Christian life and ministry. It's totally, totally unarguable by the scriptures, really, that you need the person of the Holy Spirit in your life. You need to be filled with the spirit. You need to be led by the spirit. You need... To because you see, the key to everything is Jesus, but the one who unlocks Jesus to you is the Spirit of God. Jesus said, I will send another to you, the Spirit of God. This is at the final Passover meal. I will send another to you and he will take the things that are mine and make them known unto you. I love it. Jesus also said, everything that the Father has is mine. He has given it unto me. And he says, I give it to you. But the one who is going to disseminate that information to you, the one 
that is going to release the power and the anointing and the supernaturalness of heaven to activate those things to you, that is the spirit of the living God. So you ignore the spirit of God at your own peril. Because you can't get any character, you can't get any spiritual power and gifts, you can't be led properly. And you know, Jesus said, I only do what I hear and see my father doing. Jesus was led by the spirit to do his father's will. So we must understand and give reverence to the mighty spirit of the living God. He's part of the Godhead. He's not just some additional person. It's blasphemy. He's, the, he's God. Yeah. So I, I pray, Father God, now, if there's anybody listening uh, to this talk and you have been taught against the Holy Spirit for today, for some reason, I pray that that deception would lift off of your heart and mind right now. And the truths of what I've told you from God's scriptures will penetrate your heart now and you would burst forth into fruitfulness and life in God. There are certain things that God does. There are certain things that only happen because of him. And no matter how much of man's cleverness and systems and ways get involved with certain things, there are certain things that will only happen and work for you in the Christian walk and life if you allow God to work in and through you. You see, outside of things, I can do nothing outside of the Spirit of God, outside of Jesus and Father. I have no power to do it, affect anything, really, not really. But with them, then that's another story altogether. Because now I'm connected to the limitless possibilities of heaven. I heard it once said that prayer can do anything that God can do. Think about that. If you're in Christian ministry, you need to be anointed by the Holy Spirit and receive the power of God. You need to be filled to overflowing with the Spirit of God. Jesus uh, came to baptize us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. John the Baptist said, there's one coming and I'm not worthy to even take his shoes off. He said, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Hallelujah. Jesus wants you to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I never forget the day in 19, Pentecost 1995 when I said I had a face to face, if you like, encounter with God. I say face to face. It was this. I was taken into this incredible place, this realm with God where there was nothing between me and God in the whole universe. I had no thoughts running through my mind. I had absolute clarity. I was in this place before the King of Heaven and he asked me a series of questions. And one of the qu wait, questions he asked me was, what do you want? He asked me that question three times. I gave three different answers for three different things. I'm summarizing, but the last one he said, now what do you want? And I said, well, Lord Jesus, I want you to reach your hands down from heaven I want you to baptize me with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That's what I asked for from God. I didn't ask him for money. I didn't ask him for this. I asked him to baptize me with the Holy Spirit and fire. And what ensued just after that was life changing. Life changing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Man alive. If only you had been there that day. Poof. And he wants to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That is the natural state of the body of Christ worldwide would be to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. Every single believer, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, all over the world, baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire.
Jesus and Father are very passionate for you to receive that. When we're connected to him, then you'll see fruitfulness. But we've got to stop doing things in our own strengths, in our traditions, in psychology, and all the other things that the church has gotten into. And we have to come before the living God, humble ourselves before him and say, Father, here I am. And when we come in that place of reverence and humility and with a penitent heart before God, my dear friend, I tell you, heaven's gates will open over your life. The presence of God will come. And you will know what it means to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Pentecost 1995, when I had that experience. I had previous experiences before that, going right back to 1990, when I got caught up before the throne of God and I began to speak in tongues then that was another story it's an incredible tale but I want you to know that the spirit of God wants to touch you right where you are he wants you to be fruitful in your life you see I want the provision of Jesus how about you I want everything that Jesus has to offer, I want. Well, that all comes through the person of the Holy Spirit. I'm going away, said Jesus. He said, I'm going to send another to you and he will take the things of mine. He'll make them known unto you. He would reveal them to you. Maybe you need to be to repent maybe you have been taught that the i mean and this is utter madness to me but you've been taught that the holy spirit is not for today <sighs> repent of that my friend because the enemy has sabotaged you shot you in the foot and all the provision of heaven he has gotten you to reject but i'm here today to get you unconnected from that nonsense i'm here today I've, I've told you scripturally the spirit of god is the provision of heaven for you and he is god this is not a pentecostal or charismatic thing this is a jesus thing jesus said i'm going away but i'm going to send another to you the promise of the father he's going to come So don't be deceived by a denomination if they tell you that's not for today. I mean, how can you biblically justify that on any level? Usually it's the gifts of the Spirit that's the contentious moment. But even so, how do you expect to get character, proper character, unless it's given to you by the Spirit of God, the one that's going to change you and take you from glory to glory and conform you into the image of Christ. We would say that Jesus is the greatest form of character there is, the perfection of love and holiness and everything else. And we're on this going from glory to glory, being conformed into the image of Christ. Who do you think leads you and takes you and, uh, and makes you become like Jesus? It's the Holy Spirit of God. You don't do this on your own. You don't do this by gritting your teeth and saying, I'm a good Christian, I'm going to church, I'm this. You don't do that yourself. That's the work of the Spirit of God upon you, bringing you healing, bringing you revelation, understanding, renewing your mind, changing the way you think, making you more like Jesus. That's the work of the Spirit. And if you try to denigrate God himself, the Holy Spirit, down less or ignore then you have been royally deceived by the enemy. But just repent, say sorry to God, and just receive today. Don't walk another moment longer without the provision of heaven. If Jesus said, I've got something great for you, don't you want that? I do. And 
I have, I have. He's met with me. So I would encourage you today to know and understand that. Hello, Cindy. To know and understand those things. Because you will grow in God and in your relationship with him more than anything else if you understand that the Spirit of God is the one that leads you in that way. I pray that you will be fruitful. I pray that you will have heard this message. Oh, I've got our little friend, the hare, has come out to listen. Let me see if I can turn the camera around. You can see him before he runs away. Oh, no, there he goes. He's running. I moved. <laughs> oh, well, he's gone. <laughs> they come out sometimes, these brown hares, like big rabbits, and they come out to look to see what you're doing. And then, but when I, it's movement that makes them move. Anyway. So I pray today that fruitfulness would overtake your life. But you won't do this without the person of the Holy Spirit. He's the one that teaches us the word of God. He's the one that wrote the Bible. What do you say? What do you mean he's the one that wrote the Bible? All scripture is by inspiration of God. Man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Words that have proceeded out of the mouth of God have, have come to humans and they've been written down. That becomes the Bible. Sometimes, like in the case of Moses, God wrote it himself with his finger on the tablets. There's another level to think about just there. <laughs> But please understand today that provision has been made for you. And that provision, he is the Holy Spirit or Holy Spirit. And he wants you to experience everything there is to experience of God in your life. Love, joy, peace, encouragement, supernatural power, ability to understand the scriptures, character, all of those things. The one who's in charge of it all and administrates that on the earth to humans is the Holy Spirit of God. Okay? So, I bring you that message today. Be fruitful. Let God help you. See, for some people, they've been taught that they mustn't have anything to do with the Holy Spirit. And you know what? The greatest provision for man on the earth has been cut off to people. And they hold it as a doctrinal position and even will persecute others who don't think that way. But I'm here to tell you today in love that from the scriptures I revealed to you that the spirit of God is for today. How we could think anything else um, doesn't stand up to scriptural scrutiny. Does not stand up to biblical examination. And I'm as much for anybody else. I think you would know, if you know me at all, for the supernatural, the power of God, for miracles, signs and wonder, healing. I've had angelic visitations. I've been caught up to heaven. I've seen the dead raised. I've seen all sorts of things. I've seen miracles, signs and wonders, blind eyes open. So I'm up for all of that. Devil's cast out. But I'm also a person that believes in the word of God, the presence of God and the character of God. It's not either or. It's all of these things. as modelled by Jesus. He's your greatest example. Always remember that. I know people like to quote great Christians of the past or great believers from the Bible and things like that. And that's great. And we should. But remember, Jesus is the ultimate. He is the great high priest of the order of Melchizedek. He is the king of glory. He is the one with a name above every other name. So you're being conformed from glory to glory into the image of Abraham, into the image of Elijah, into the image of Billy Graham, into the image of, I don't know who, no. You're being conformed into the image of Jesus. So he is your role model. He is the one to aspire to be like, to emulate, is Jesus. Because that's who the Spirit of God is transforming you more and more to be like him. Amen. So my greatest hero, my inspiration, my vision is Jesus. 
Fix your eyes on the author and the finisher of your faith, Jesus Christ. I love Revelation chapter 1 where it says, um, it took, John was on the island of Patmos and we know, and he had these great encounters with with God, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And he said, I saw one there, eyes blazing like fire, feet like burnished bronze, and a voice like the sound of many waters. Behold, I was dead, but now I am alive and I live forevermore. See the vision of the resurrected Son of the living God today, Jesus the Holy One. Morobo shaka pariyasa, shako rabashanda. I pray that the vision of the resurrected Jesus will flood your heart and your mind today. That you would see him glorious. There, shining, face shining brighter than the sun. Jesus, the name that is above every other name. Everything in heaven, on earth and under the earth is, is, must bow before him. That's my inspiration today. Yeshua. Jesus, the Holy Son of God. Hallelujah. So fix your eyes on the one who has started your faith and the one who will finish it. He's the beginning and the end. The Alpha and the Omega, that's Greek. The Aleph and the Taf, that's Hebrew. The beginning and the end, that's all it means. He Fix your eyes on the Lord Jesus. Oh, she called Rabasaka. In him is hidden all riches and wisdom and knowledge and revelation, and glory and power and might and character and love. And oh, it's all in Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. It's all about him, the great king himself. It's all about Jesus. And when we lift up the great Son of God and we magnify His name and we lift Him up and we declare Him, heaven responds. Heaven hears and says, yes! And the Spirit of God says, I come to confirm this. Boom! With His presence. Miracles, signs and wonders, healing breaks forth. If you're a minister... Get on your knees before God. Repent of your sin. Walk humbly before your God. Preach Jesus and the fire of heaven will come. <clears throat> the anointing will come and break the heavy yokes. That's the formula if you like. Holiness, Spirit of God, preach Jesus. And then you will see lives changed. But you are not going to mentally gymnastic people into believing. It is the Spirit of God that convicts people of their sin. He has come to convict the world of sin, of righteousness and the judgment to come. Who? The Spirit of God. How can He not do, how can he do that if He's not here anymore? If He's not active? Convict the world of sin, righteousness, and the judgment to come. That's what the Spirit of God has come for. He has come to magnify the great Lord Jesus. He has come to reveal and illumine Him to the whole world. He has come to attest to the preaching of the gospel. He wants to open your eyes and reveal to your heart the true love of God. Heavenly Father, I pray for every person watching live or who will watch the replay. I pray that the power of God would come right where you are. I pray that the Lord would touch you with his love, with his grace, with his power, with his fire. Lord, loose your power to that one, I pray. Let healing break forth. Let revelation come. Let joy come. Let bondages break. Let health come. Let strength come. Let peace come. Let joy come. Lord, use your power right now, I pray. All over the world. Touch them, Father, I pray. You see, the Bible says that you shall 
receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in the end of the earth. So receive that power today and be touched by the Holy Spirit. I see somebody's legs getting freed up right now. The sort of arthritic, stiff legs. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Just as I was praying like that, some guy just cycled past on his bike and he was like, <laughs> Jesus, touch that man, I pray, with your power. Some mountain biker just <laughs> rode past. Hallelujah. I didn't stop. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for your presence even now. Sickness and infirmities, leave the people right now. Loose them from all infirmity, Father, I pray now in Jesus' name. Breathing problems, chest pain, right now. Right now. Cognitive disability. Disability in the thinking. In the, in the thinking, in the brain. Some sort of damage in the brain and in the thinking. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke that right now and I speak healing to the brain and the brain waves and your thinking and your ability to think, reason and understand. Maybe the ability of your brain to connect and move parts of your body or functions in your body. I speak restoration to brain damage in the name of Jesus right now. Back, neck and spine be healed in the name of Jesus. Feet, toes, ankles be healed in the name of Jesus. Gross and infections uh, be be healed. Skin cancer. Die in the name of Jesus. Lumps and bumps and tumours. Dissolve. Go in the name of Jesus right now. Father God, I pray for eye problems to be healed. Hip problems to be healed. Hearing problems to be healed. Right now, touch people right where they are. I pray that those ears would pop open now in the name of Jesus. Ears open in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, right now. Blood disorders, be healed in Jesus' name. Jesus, great Son of God, manifest and prove that you are who you are. Manifest and prove that you died upon the cross and that three days later you bodily rose from the grave so that humanity could be forgiven. Humanity could receive a lifeline. That humanity could come back into relationship with Almighty God. Jesus, I pray that that would be proved today by your Spirit confirming the gospel that you suffered, you bled and you died and you rose again and you are now at the right hand of God the Father forevermore. Jesus. Touch the people, I pray, wherever they are around the world. Hallelujah. I pray, Jesus, that you would be magnified, that you would be revealed, that you would be unveiled to those listening today. I pray that drug dependency would be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Be delivered of addiction in the name of Jesus, Lord. Every demonic power harassing people, I command it to break. In Jesus' name, come out of the people right now. Right now, wherever they are listening to this, come out in Jesus' name. Be delivered now. Every evil spirit, come out now in the name of Jesus. If you're starting to cough and vomit, or whatever, just let it happen. Let it come out right now. In Jesus' name, loose the people now. Spirit of God, manifest the glory of Jesus' this kingdom. Touch the people now. People bound in their shoulders and stiff and can't move. I, I command those weights to come off you and the healing to come now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Remember the scripture says, Submit to God... Resist the devil and then he will flee. It's not just resist the devil, it's submit to God. Resist the devil and then he flees and he will. Or his minions.
So God bless you today, wherever you are around the world. I pray that you will be flooded by the love and the presence of Almighty God. If you've got any prayer requests, put them in the comments section. If you want to write to me, use the usual email address, which is on the heading of every video like this that I do. And also, if you want to give towards the ministry and help me, you can do that via PayPal or Cash App. Um, or if you want to send me a message, you want to do a bank transfer, we can do that. Don't worry. Send it on Messenger and we'll sort it out. I'll email you details. But God bless you wherever you are. And I pray that the Spirit of God, he will become so real to you. Your heart will be thrilled. God bless you. Bye.